Tesla stock has been on a tear. Its 11 consecutive winning sessions helped the EV maker regain all of its lost ground so far this year until today. Tesla's robo-taxi event, one of the drivers behind that stock's recent run-up, has reportedly now been delayed by two months, sinking the stock back into negative territory for the year. Joining me now is Doug Clinton, Deepwater Asset Management Managing Partner. Doug, it is great to have you on the show. So let's dive right into this headline, Doug. So reportedly, uh, maybe Elon Musk thinking of delaying this robo-taxi event, Doug, to October. In your opinion, you, you know this company so well, big deal? No deal. How do you see it, Doug? Well, Josh, the first thing I would say is nothing is official in Tesla land until you hear it from Elon himself. Because what sort of led to this event in the first place was a Reuters report several months ago that the Model 2 was going to be canceled. Elon said that that is false. And then he followed up saying that we're going to have a robotaxi event in August. We haven't seen Elon tweet anything yet. I just checked before we jumped on air here. Uh, he hasn't said anything about the event yet, so who knows what could happen. But let's say that the event is delayed, in fact, to October. In my view, what the stock has been doing more recently is it's been reflecting the hype and the excitement that investors are having for Tesla and what might come in terms of this robo-taxi and what that ultimately might mean for the model. And Tesla, more than any other stock, is such a powerful religion. And I think that investors, as they see these new products coming, not just the robo taxi in October, but probably a few new vehicles as well. I think people are starting to figure out what could this mean to our models? And they were sort of front running potentially some changes in terms of how analysts and investors think about that business. And Doug, when you, when you talk about robo taxis though, I mean, it's such a, it's such a long term goal in some sense, Doug. I mean, wouldn't it be a, a, a very long time before you would see any you know, real meaningful financial impact from that? I do think that's, that's probably realistic. And it's funny, I mean, going into the event actually, given Tesla's track record, but also just what they do. I mean, they solve really hard physical real world problems and they're maybe one of the best companies in the world at it, but often their timelines are a little bit optimistic. They often miss their timelines. It's just a, a normal thing with Tesla. Going into this event, I sort of assumed whatever date they put on their launch of the RoboTaxi, you might wanna add six to 12 months to. And then if you think beyond that to the point of your question, Josh, when does it actually start impacting the model? Tesla has a really large business already in terms of selling cars. They obviously have several hundred thousand FSD subscribers as well. And so the robo taxi business would have to get to a pretty decent scale to really start having some impact, meaningful impact on the model. So I think we could still be in a situation where even if the robo taxi launches, let's say late next year or early in 26, the real impact of the model might still be a few years beyond that. Even investors will start to discount some of that into the model, but we will have to be patient before seeing real numbers in it. I'm also Doug, well, curious while I have you just switch gears a little bit, get your take on XAI. I'm just curious, though, so this is Musk's um, AI startup. I'm just, as you think about that, Doug, that AI startup, what is, what is Musk up to there? What do you think his objective is? Um, you know, what's he trying to achieve? He does have, he's got, he's got a lot of data at his disposal, Doug. He does, and uh, Deepwater, in full disclosure, is an investor actually in XAI. We're very you are, that, that's, part of that. Doug, that's interesting. Why, why did you invest? We share the vision that I think that Elon has kind of proposed for what XAI is all about, which is sort of to be this maximally truth-seeking AI. And to be maximally truth-seeking, I think you have to really have a deep respect for figuring out you know, the sciences, figuring out physics. And if you think about who in the world has done the most to uh, figure out things, physical problems, like we just talked about, it's Tesla, it's SpaceX, and it's Elon. And so I think he's probably in a different and more unique position than some of these other companies like a Google, like an open AI who are great in the digital space, but they're sort of amateurs in the physical space. I think that's where the real opportunity is for XAI. And finally, Doug, um, I'm just interested to get your take on another big name, which like Tesla has had a nice run here, Apple. Um, you know, we're getting ready for Tim Cook to take the stage, Doug, in September. That's when you would expect him to unveil that next iPhone. And bulls are, they're optimistic, Doug. They think, listen, this AI-enabled iPhone, it is, it is gonna jumpstart a meaningful upgrade cycle. Is that how you see it, Doug? 
Apple's up 10% since that AI event in June. And I think the reality is this, we've seen some reports recently that Apple is potentially thinking about orders for the new device, the iPhone 16, about 10% higher than what they did last year with the 15. And just to put that into context, Apple has been sort of down single digit, mid single digits year over year in terms of total revenue, which is largely reflective of the iPhone for the past several quarters. So if we go from down kind of mid single digits to potentially up 10% year over year, I do think that that's probably a meaningful inflection for Apple. And I think it's probably higher than where the street is at in terms of numbers for the model. I think it's all about can they deliver on the promise of making AI ultimately simplistic and usable for the average person? And again, they might be the only company or the best company in the world to pull that off. Doug, always great to have you on the show. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us. Thanks, Josh.